On the last episode, we created a schematic symbol for our 555 badge project. This time, we'll be using that symbol and connecting it to parts we find in other libraries to make our full circuit. This is an important step in the board creation process as we need to tell KiCad how our components are connected together. Schematic capture, also known as schematic entry, is the process by which the designer, us in this case, creates the circuit diagram in the CAD program. We'll be using KiCad's EE schema for this part. Often, PCB layout programs aren't really good at helping you design circuits, but some are starting to include simulation programs, also known as SPICE programs. While we're glossing over the whole circuit design part, our fading LED circuit was based on a flashing LED example from 555timercircuits.com. This program is LT SPICE, a free circuit simulation program. A transistor was added to allow more current to flow through two LEDs and a large 100 microfarad capacitor was connected to the transistor's base. This causes the voltage on the positive side of the capacitor to now slowly rise and fall, which in turn means a slow increase and decrease of current flowing into the transistor's base. If we run the simulation and measure the current flowing through the LEDs, we can see how they will, in theory, slowly increase and decrease in brightness. I won't go into the details of using LT Spice, but if you're curious, SparkFun has a very good tutorial on getting started with it. Once the circuit has been simulated, I like to build it on a breadboard to make sure everything works in reality. Sometimes the simulator doesn't catch all the little variations in parts, capacitances and wires, and so on. Here we see the LEDs fading as expected. Now that we've proven the circuit works, I like to redraw it on some engineering paper to organize the parts in a way that's easy to read before entering it into EE Schema. Open KiCad, and you'll be greeted by the familiar Project Manager window. Click Tools, Run EE Schema to start the schematic capture program. You should see a red colored border with numbers and letters. On very complex schematics, it can be handy to refer to sections. For example, you might say, there's an issue with the filter design in B4, and other engineers could locate that section easily. The bottom right contains some fields that provide information about the schematic, which can be very helpful if you have several pages or different versions printed out on your desk. It's always a good idea to fill this part out in case you ever want to share your schematic or keep track of changes. To do that, go to File, Page Settings. In the window that pops up, click the three arrow button to copy today's date into the date field. You can use whatever versioning system you like, but I like to use a simple incrementing numbering system. So I'll write V01 here. I'll write the same V01 on the PCB somewhere, so I know that it's based on this particular schematic. If I ever make changes to the hardware, I'll change the schematic and PCB to V02, then V03, and so on. We'll write the title as 555 badge and leave the company line blank. The comment lines are a good way to write things like the author and license. For some reason, the comment lines appear backwards, so we'll write author, your name, in the fourth comment line. We want people to be able to use this board for other purposes, so we'll have it be open source under the Creative Commons license. Write license, CC by 4.0 in the third line, and creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by slash 4.0 slash in the second. Click OK, and you should see the title block filled out with your information. Click Place Component to go into the Place Component mode. Notice that your cursor changes to a sort of pen symbol. Click anywhere in the schematic sheet to open the part chooser. Expand our custom 555 badge library, select 7555, and you should see the symbol that we created in the last episode appear. Click OK, and the symbol should appear on your cursor. Click somewhere in the middle of the schematic sheet to drop the component. As in the library editor, you can hover your mouse over the part and press the M key to move the part. With the part on your cursor, you can press R to rotate it. You can click to place the component in a new location or press the escape key to cancel. Instead of using the place drop-down menu to pick a part every time, you can also click the place component button on the right or just press the A key to bring up the component chooser. Let's go ahead and add all of our resistors. 
In addition to our 555 badge library that we made, you can also browse through all of the libraries that come default with KiCad. These have some very useful components, so it can be handy to look through here first. Expand the Device Library, scroll down, and click on R. This is our basic resistor component in KiCad. Click OK. Click to place the first resistor above and to the left of the discharge pin. Click again to bring up the Component Chooser window. Remember, we're still in the Place Component mode. R should already be selected since it was the last component we chose, so just click OK or press Enter. Place this resistor a few grid marks down from the first one. Click again, make sure R is selected, and click OK to get a third resistor. With the resistor on your cursor, press the R key to rotate it. With this resistor horizontal, place it down and to the right of the OUT pin. My goal is to place all of the components in the general area of where they need to go based on my hand-drawn schematic. Usually, I'll have this schematic on my desk so I can reference it easily, but that's a little hard to do with this screen capture program, so I'll just overlay a picture of it so you can reference it too. Continue placing all seven resistors. Don't worry about exact placement. We can fix that later. These are great generic resistors, but it can be handy to show their values. Hover over the first resistor and right-click. If you're asked to choose between a field value and component, select the component. In the pop-up menu, select Edit Component and Value. Where it says Text, replace R with the value of our resistor, which is 22K in this case. Don't worry about adding the ohm symbol. Most schematics assume the units for resistors. Click OK. A faster way of doing this is to hover your mouse over the resistor and press the V key for value. Do this for the second resistor and change its value to 330K. Repeat this process for the rest of the resistors referring to the example circuit diagram for resistor values. Once you're done, press the A key to bring up our part chooser again. We want to add our two capacitors next. Instead of trying to browse through all the components in the library, we can also use the search function to make life easier. Type C in the filter and you should see a selection of capacitors appear. C is a regular unpolarized capacitor, but we don't want that. Our 10 and 100 microfarad values will be too big for most ceramic type capacitors, so we'll rely on polarized electrolytic capacitors, which means we'll want to show that they're polarized in the schematic. CP means capacitor polarized. KiCad's default is to have the positive bar of the capacitor be hollow, but I'm not a fan of that look. The curved negative bar is what I learned in school, so I'll go with that. It's really a matter of personal preference as to how you want your schematic to look, so choose whichever you like. I'll place the first capacitor just below the 330K resistor. Note that the positive side should be facing up, as we'll connect the negative side to ground eventually. Place a second capacitor in parallel with the 100K resistor. Give the first capacitor a value of 10 microfarads and the second a value of 100 microfarads. All components that have some kind of value and aren't resistors should have the units shown, which is why we write an F for the capacitors. Press A to open the component chooser and search for LED. Select the first LED option and press OK. Rotate it so that the current will flow down through the LED and place it below one of the 100 ohm resistors. Because the LED symbol shows that it's an LED and not just a diode, thanks to the little arrows, having LED as the value is a little redundant. It's often helpful to change the value to the color of the LED we want. So, press V over the LED and change the text from LED to red. You can also copy components so that you can keep the value and other attributes you might have assigned. Hover your mouse over the LED and press the C key. A new LED will appear on your cursor. Click to place it below the other 100 ohm resistor. Press A to open the component chooser. We want a transistor, but here's the tricky part. Depending on the type and manufacturer, some of the pins might be swapped, so we need to know what transistor we want to use before putting one in our schematic. The 2N3904 is a very common and very cheap NPN bipolar junction transistor that will work just fine with our circuit. If we look at the data sheet, we can note that the pins go emitter base collector with the flat edge facing up. Back in our component chooser, we can search for 2N3904 and see that the pins line up with the one from the data sheet, emitter base collector. Select it and click OK and place it so that the base lines up with the 10K resistor. We're almost done, but there's a slight problem. 
KiCad doesn't have a battery holder or slide switch that we need for our board. The good news is that DigiKey has it in their KiCad library, so let's go download that. This is another example of where that messy, chaotic nature of board layout comes into play. You'll be going along making your schematic and then say realize that KiCad didn't have the part you need in the default library, so you either consider making your own or you start going through third-party libraries all the while checking DigiKey's site to see if they have the part you need in stock. To keep these videos rolling, let's assume for now that you've already identified the specific battery holder and switch that you need. Head to github.com slash digikey slash digikey dash keycad dash library. Click clone or download and click download zip. Find where you downloaded that file and unzip it. Go into that folder and copy the digikey keycad library master directory. Go to where you're keeping your KiCad project files, which is Documents KiCad for me. Create a new folder called Libraries. This is a good place to keep libraries that we download from the internet or any larger custom libraries we might make for sharing among projects. Paste the DigiKey library directory in there. If you navigate into DigiKey's library folder, you'll see that it's made up of a symbols directory, which is a collection of schematic symbol libraries, and a .pretty folder, which is a library for a lot of footprints in KiCad. Back in EE Schema, we need to import the DigiKey library that we just downloaded. Click Preferences, Component Libraries. In the Component Library Files section, click Add. Navigate to the DigiKey Symbols folder in your KiCad Libraries directory and select DK Battery Holders Clips Contacts and click Open. Click Add again Navigate to the DigiKey Symbols folder, select DK Slide Switches, and click OK. Scroll down in the Library Files section to verify that both libraries were added. Click OK. Press A to add a component. Scroll down and you'll see that both DigiKey libraries were added as DK Batteries Holders Clips Contacts and DK Slide Switches. Expand the battery library, select BS7, which is the coin cell battery holder we'll be using, and click OK. Rotate it so that the positive pin is facing up and place the part to the left of the 330K resistor. Press A again and expand the DK slide switches library. Select the EG1218. This is the three terminal single pole double throw switch that we'll use. Click OK. Rotate it so that pin 3 is facing down and place the part just above the battery symbol. We could wire everything up now to make our completed schematic, but something that makes things easier to read is flags. Flags have the effect of connecting things together without having to look at wires on the screen. It just makes things cleaner. Any node that has a flag with a name is automatically connected to all other nodes with that same flag and name. Most commonly, you'll see power and ground flags on schematics. I know, I know. Ground should only be reserved for things that are connected to earth ground, but calling the common return path in a circuit is now just accepted as ground. So we'll just keep using that term for now. Bring up the component chooser and search for GND. Select the GND power flag symbol and click OK. Place it below the 10 microfarad capacitor. Hover over it and press C to copy it to the other ground nodes as per the example diagram. Open the component chooser and search for VCC, which is a commonly used power flag for schematics. Place a VCC flag next to the common pin on the switch, as this is what will allow us to connect and disconnect battery power to the rest of the circuit. Copy the flag to the other power flag locations. Note that I like to leave at least one grid space between components, as it prevents confusion about whether something is connected or not when we go to add wires. Time to wire. Select Place Wire. Click to start a wire from the leftmost ground flag and then click again to connect it to the negative battery pin. This tells KiCad that we intend for the negative battery terminal to be connected to all the other ground node pins, such as to the negative pin on the two capacitors. Click to start another wire from the battery's positive terminal and connect it to pin 3 of the switch. Another way to add a wire is to use the W key. Hover your mouse over the end of pin 2 of the switch and press W. A wire will automatically start from here. If the wire isn't touching a second pin, you can click to add a 90 degree bend, which I'll do here so that I can connect it to the VCC flag.
continue connecting wires to our parts as shown in the hand-drawn circuit diagram. Note that some pins should be left unconnected, like pin 5 on the 7555 timer. When you're done, take a step back and look at your work. Pat yourself on the back for finishing the first major step toward making your board. Don't forget to save your schematic by clicking File, Save Schematic Project, and then close out of EE Schema. Uh, uh. It always feels good to get the circuit drawn up in schematic capture. We're almost ready to move on to the board layout part, but first we need to see how to create custom footprints before associating those footprints with our schematic symbols. That'll come on the next episode, so stay tuned!